Can you give us, like, walk us through a case study of someone that you've worked with and how you've actually applied this in practice? So I think a lot of times we hear theory, right? Or sometimes we we hear different ideas, um, but taking that from reading about it to application is often the hardest the hardest part. So could you give us an example of that? Yeah, I would say like the the very first case study that was really clean would be the the kid with scoliosis um, okay. who went from mid to upper eighties to like ran it up to ninety eight ninety nine at some point. I think looking back on it, I think Blake Brown was actually a really good one, especially when you think about like spring model of the legs versus maybe more spinal engine type model, I guess. So Blake was like a low 90s arm back in college, like maybe middle of college. And if you watched his throw, there wasn't a ton of side bending at all. It was, it was super. It was super linear. Um, he was very extended off his back leg. So he, he, by that, he would he would spring off his back leg, push, and then essentially mechanically, if you extend off the back leg before the pelvis rotates, you run out of room in the hip to be able to actually continue pelvis rotation. So then your your torso takes over and you're getting – early rotation of the torso. Uh, so it's just very inefficient uh, mechanically, um, rotationally speaking. He was a very linear thrower. Um, and think about that. I just think about like the spring model with like, you can think about just pushing off the back leg and then um, very linear. And really the big thing with Blake was getting him to – getting him to side bend, I guess. So Walsh had him start to do these, these step backs where essentially he would step back onto his, onto his leg. And it wasn't just like a, you just take a little step back and then you leg kick. He would like really step back. And then it would almost look like a, a teeter totter and his, he'd kick his front foot out super far away, almost as like a counterbalance. And then he would look like he was going to throw it like 700 feet. And then he would just at the last second come over the top and pull down. And you could see he had, his stride ended up being shorter, but it was it was really, really clean rotationally. And he would end up throwing these. He'd be able to like throw 95, 96 out of, out of these step backs whenever he wanted. Any day, any time, recovery day, without trying. And then he would throw slower out of his delivery half the time. Um, and then essentially we we were able, he was able to figure out how to manipulate his delivery to to feed the same like step back kind of kind of deal. And and if you watch it from the side, especially from behind, you could see his spine and his pelvis almost like the quadruple amputee when. I guess for a right-hander, the left pelvis would come forward and the right shoulder line or trunk would load back to the to the right. You could just see that happening in his delivery once he figured it out. And so he he didn't do any he didn't do any pull downs. He didn't do any anything linearly off the mound. No linear momentum. Um it was all maximizing like his rotational sequencing i guess and like impulse and seeing that because i guess the even before that we were like oh you need to this is probably like 2019 2020 it was like you just do if you want to gain velocity you just get good at pull downs you just run and throw because if you throw harder you throw harder which and is not really like a bad idea i, I mean you still use it but the thing with Blake was it was like, well, it doesn't matter if it doesn't transfer to the mound. And if you're still moving poorly on the mound, if like efficiency wise, you're not going to throw that hard. So it was all about maximizing that. And if you look at the two deliveries, the difference is, is just like you can see how much better he is rotationally and how much I guess the the his stride is shorter, but the way his 
spine moves and his pelvis and the way it, it loads and unloads is it looks like that of the quadruple amputee walking. And so that was, that was pretty cool to see. Cause that wasn't even like we were, it, w- it was being done on purpose of like, Oh, the spine, like that was before it was like super deep into it. It was more like hindsight, looking back on it and like evaluating, evaluating the decisions that were made for Blake to find that it was like, well, what, what actually changed? Like what made the difference? It was the whole, like you, we, you, you could sit here and be like, well, a strength coach, if, if whoever, I mean, like Walsh did his strength too. Well, it was, so it was like, if, if you had a third party strength coach who maybe gave him some exercises, that strength coach could be like, well, yeah, he got better. Cause I gave him these exercises. Cause you want to be right. You want to feel good, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with that. So it was like, looking back on that progression to figure out what actually changed and then why.